welcome to Android Weekly on Butterscotch.com, the show that jumps into the Android news fray and surfaces with all the news that's important to you, or at least to me, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. This week we're switching gears a little for our top five Android apps for tablets. These lists are highly subjective and it's all based on opinion, but let me just say this, if you disagree with our list, you're, well there's no easy way to say it, you're wrong. We look forward to your angry comments and personal attacks. But first, we clear the debt on our credit cards in order to be able to buy more apps by giving some love to the sponsor that makes Android Weekly and other great Butterscotch.com shows possible. Hover.com is the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. In the interest of hooking you up with the apps we're showing today, we're using Hover to shorten the unruly Android market URLs to something more manageable. It's easy to make a personalized shortened URL, and it's more trustworthy and memorable and brandable than a Libyan.ly or Lichtenstein.li URL. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash android. Number five, stumble upon. Anyone that tries to tell you the tablet is a business tool is, well, a business tool. Sure, there are all kinds of productive things you can do, but why bother? After you've checked Facebook for the 12th time, you've tweeted every single thought that's come to mind, you've refreshed your email endlessly, it's stumble upon to the rescue. Hit the stumble button and based on your interests, you're presented with a site you probably otherwise would have never found. Or you could extricate yourself from that Starbucks chair and free up the space for someone who's actually buying something. Your call. Number four, Grocery IQ tablet. We all need to eat, and Grocery IQ makes sure the cupboards are never bare. On an Android phone, this is a handy app that lets you ditch the paper lists and get rid of the pencil tucked behind your ear. On the tablet, though, it's perfect for using at home. The wider tablet view lets you organize your stores on the left and enter the items you need to buy on the right. Then, when it's time to hit the store, your perfectly synced grocery list comes with you on your phone. Sure, the pencil and paper approach is cheaper than the tablet and smartphone approach, but it's considerably less fun. Number three, Wi-Fi analyzer. To date, few Android tablets have a mobile connection. You're gonna be relying on Wi-Fi to post Facebook updates and waste time online. Wi-Fi analyzer will help you find the strongest and most reliable and fastest Wi-Fi connection going. It'll also let you see which channels are already overrun with Wi-Fi networks, so you can pick a less saturated channel for your own wireless network at home or in the office. Number two, Google Reader and Google Reader Play. Sadly, Google Reader isn't optimized for tablets. All you're really getting is the larger view on the same app you'll be using on your Android smartphone. That said, Google Reader is the single best way to pull all your news sources into one place. Now we'd expect Google to lead the charge when it comes to optimized apps for his tablets, but it doesn't in this case. For a more tablet-friendly view on Google Reader, fire up your browser and head to google.com slash reader slash play. Perhaps this is what the Google Reader app will become for Android tablets. Here's hoping, because while Google Reader is very handy on your tablet, it's hardly cutting edge. Number one, Double Twist Player. The stock media management app on Android devices is, how do we put this delicately? A steaming pile. Double Twist steps in to fill the void. Aside from letting you sync any music you have in iTunes to your Android device, it's also the best all-around music and media manager, handling podcasts, video, and over-the-air radio streams. For our review of the day, we throw it over to a guy that looks remarkably like me. The Acer Iconia A500 is the first Android tablet coming out of Acer, and it's a good, if not quite great, first showing. On the hardware side, we have a very capable dual-core 1GHz processor and a gig of RAM that keeps things moving nicely. We also get a 10-inch capacitive touchscreen, front and rear facing cameras, and HDMI out for connecting the tablet to an HDTV. While the guts of this thing are solid, the same can't quite be said for the overall construction. In keeping the price down below the dreaded $500 balk point for an Android tablet, while still offering the latest in tablet specs, some sacrifices have been made. The Acer Iconia A500 clocks in at a relatively wallet-friendly $450. Submitted for your perusal, a case that feels decidedly plasticky and a vibration motor that's both sporadic and ill-tuned. Acer's Honeycomb Reskin is decent, but as we've said countless times before, we'd much rather see stock Android. Sure, shoehorn your own apps in natively, but don't mess with the program. What's really highlighted here are the dual-core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor and GeForce GPU. HD games really pop and slowdown is scarce. That said, there's still a dearth of real HD games available, such as the price of early adoption. This tablet will handle your email with aplomb, get you a larger view on just about any site on the net, and using Google Talk facilitates video calls. As an approved build, you get full access to the Android market and the better than 150,000 apps it contains. Stay tuned to Gadget TV on Butterscotch.com where we'll bring you a full in-depth video review of the Acer Iconia A500. Well, those are but a few of the Android apps that deserve a little space on your tablet. For full show notes, links to all the apps we've looked at today, previous episodes, or to subscribe to the show, visit Butterscotch.com. Until next week, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin.